ECOSOC held a special panel discussion on pushing efforts to help end poverty and achieve the Millennium Development Goals by the set date of 2015, where financial and social development experts address issues of inequality, sustainability and inclusiveness directly impacting the success of achieving these goals. Lazarus Kumbawe, President of the United Nations Economic and Social Council, pointed to education for sustainable economic growth and development. Mr. Kambwabwe also noted that inclusive and equitable growth underscores a significant social challenge, but said that uneven distribution of growth benefits that did not deliver gains to all social groups would lead to social tensions. We are talking about uh, access, and in particular access for the girl child. We are talking about quality, and uh, under quality we are talking about the quality of teachers, the quality of the curriculum, the relevance of that curriculum to the needs of the economy, to the needs of industry. Mm -hmm. It is important also for us to acknowledge the need for us to have burden sharing between the developed and the developing countries with regard to the education of uh, particularly those in the least developed countries. I think that this old concept of social justice has to come back into our discussion. We cannot go on assuming that this will be a mechanical and a practical and objective result of the way our growth patterns work. They have not worked that way and we have to ask ourselves these questions. In the past 20 years, the per capita real GDP really doubled. You know, for the whole world, it's roughly from $4,200 to roughly $9,000, it doubled. For the advanced economy, roughly 1.4, uh, 14,000 to you know 29,000 is double. For middle income, it's a triple, but for the low income, actually, it's less double. Juan Somavia, Director General of the International Labor Organization, highlighted that in the last 10 years, inequality has been growing in the developed world. And Cho Tae Yul, Ambassador for Development Cooperation for the Republic of Korea, said investing on human capital is key. Allowing people to find jobs would allow them to consume and therefore stimulate economic growth. Panel experts also stress the need to deal with price volatility in food, fuel, as well as commodities, and address the issues of economic governance towards social protection, including the aging population and the world's youth. With 980 million people in poverty and white gaps remaining in the MDG achievements, infrastructure and other development gaps between and within the countries, the region indeed has much headroom for expanding aggregate demand for sustaining growth if it can deal with these issues and if it, if it can actually build on income security. I think we face a world of uh, very significant challenges where we've discovered that just giving people handouts doesn't really work. We have to find a way of giving them the capability to help themselves, both in terms of people, organisations and communities. And what we've discovered is there are three primary inputs in health, education and enterprise that have to be integrated together to affect change. Uh, what we've discovered is if you can give people back their self-respect, then it's quite amazing how they become self-motivated to improve their environment, to actually not be a, a burden on others and to, to create s special communities. And this seems to apply across the world. And yes, they are pockets within the United States where we certainly need to improve the education uh, but overall I think just the opposite that our educational standards have uh, improved and that we are still um, leading the rest of the world in innovation. In Kenya we have made a very steady progress. We started this program in 2003. The total enrollment in our primary schools was 5.9 million. Today, as I talk to you, we are about 9.36 million children in our primary school, an increase of about 59%. Uh, looking at the secondary education, which was a late comer in the program in 2008, we started with a, a total enrollment of 1.38 million children. Now we are at the level of uh, 1.7 million children. Again, a very dramatic increase. So both in terms of access we think we are well within our purview and in terms of uh, retention, 
uh, that's the area that we looking at the challenges that meet uh, the, the program that we need to clear. ECOSOC's high-level segment on education is yet another key opportunity for leaders to push forward political will towards structural changes that could help eradicate poverty, advance the education for all agenda, and end global economic injustice. With 67 million children deprived of an education and 980 million people still living in extreme poverty, result of negotiations here at ECOSOC's high-level segment on education for all will require real action and change on the ground if the Millennium Development Goals are to be reached by 2015. Afaf Kanja for South South News at the United Nations in Geneva, Switzerland.